how to organize and manage your social media posts in Scrivener. These days, you won't get away with just writing a book. You have to market it on social media platforms as well, meaning you'll have to have a working knowledge of how they work and what you need to post on them to market your book. You'll need to know the recommended image sizes, video size and duration, heading character counts, etc., as well as any rules that must never be broken. What better way to manage all your social media activities than in Scrivener where you already do your writing? You can keep all your information about optimum image sizes, word counts and best practices, as well as write and store everything you want to say in every post right inside the same project. Hi, this is Kaz from Scrivener Quick Start, where I help you organize your projects and get more done faster using Scrivener. And in this training, I'm going to focus on managing your social media places. You'll find a link to my Scrivener templates page in the description below so that you can download the template we're working on today. And you'll find instructions on the same page to upload it to your Scrivener app and add your own spin to it. If you open Scrivener from scratch, you'll see the Project Templates window. But if you have an existing project open, go to File, New Project. You'll find the Social Media Template in the Quick Start tab or the Miscellaneous tab. Open it as a new project. If you want to add the contents of the template to an existing project, if you've got Merge All Windows toggled on, drag the project template off and place it above the project you want to add to. Create a social media folder inside the existing project and check whether or not your existing project has a document templates folder, because you can only have one document templates folder active in a project at a time. This novel template came with one and it's called the Template Sheets folder. Select all the folders you want from the Social Media Template with the exception of the Document Templates folder and drag them into your Social Media folder. Then select only the sub-document within the Document Templates folder and drag it inside the Template Sheets folder of the existing project. Then delete the social media templates project. But in this case, I'll use the social media template as a standalone social media project. Now say I want to create an image featuring my book and I want to post it to Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. The first thing you need to know is that the image size and even the optimum aspect ratio might be different for each of the three platforms. If the aspect ratio is the same as in square, you could create one image at the lowest resolution, which in this case is Pinterest. But when you post it on Facebook, you might not have a nice crisp image and Instagram specifically requires a higher resolution. It could even be different depending on the type of post you want to create. On Facebook, the width of a square image or a linked image from someone's website is 1200 pixels. But a vertical image is more in line with the Instagram standard because Facebook owns both and people can share from one to the other. So I've created quick reference infographics for each of the social media platforms with images to make it clearer for you. Sometimes if you just read the measurements, it's hard to know what they want. For a Facebook page cover image, you get to upload one image, but the image is displayed differently on mobile than it is on a desktop. Luckily, Facebook doesn't stretch or distort the image to fit mobile or desktop. It crops the image differently for each one. Facebook recommends an optimum size of 851 pixels by 315, but the image will display at 820 pixels wide by 312 pixels tall on a desktop and 640 pixels wide by 360 pixels tall on a smartphone. So to optimize for both desktop and smartphone, you make one image of 820 pixels wide, which is the display width on a desktop, by 360 pixels tall, which is the display height on a smartphone. 
but know where Facebook is going to automatically cut them off for the two different shapes so that you don't put anything important in the cutoff zones. Note that on your individual Facebook, the profile image is in the middle and obscures part of the image. The same applies to a YouTube channel. The whole image needs to be 2560 by 1440 to display on a TV screen, but less than a third will show on a computer screen, even less on a tablet, and only this middle bit will show on a phone. So you need a suitable image that's not going to look funny where it's cut off, and all your text needs to be in this middle area. So whatever social media you decide to use, there's an easy visual reference at the top of this template. Whether you add these documents to an existing project for one book or you have a social media project for all your books, I always keep a handy list of all keywords that are useful for a particular subject. If you work on different subjects, simply add new files here for each subject. And it stands to reason that a lot of your important links will apply to all your social media places. Then, for each platform, I've added a brief explanation of why you might like to use the platform, what to watch out for, and a link to a video showing you how to set up an account and get started. Keep updating this file as these platforms add new features. You can copy a URL and paste it into Scrivener and as soon as you hit enter it will automatically become an active link. This next file is where you fill in your profile information for a platform. For some fields, like your description, it's easier to compose it inside Scrivener and copy-paste it into the boxes on the various platforms. You can check your character count in the footer bar below. Once you've written it for one platform, split your screen. If you're using Mac, you might have to hold down Option to split screens horizontally and have the original info in one split and fill in the same or similar info into the other depending on the character count restrictions imposed on the second platform. Then you can link from inside this document to any images you have on your hard drive so that at any time you have the document open you can preview your image in the inspector. So I would link my profile image and my cover image for Facebook here. Open your inspector window. In Scrivener 3, open your bookmarks tab. In previous versions of Scrivener, open the document references tab. Open the more menu or the gear icon and choose add external file bookmark or reference. This will open your finder on Mac or your explorer on Windows where you can navigate to the image on your hard drive and add it. We need a profile image and a cover image. Whatever you have selected in the list will show in the preview window below. You could also drag images directly into your editor from this preview window, from your desktop or a folder on your hard drive, but it is better to link them to keep the file size of the Scrivener project down. This next folder is for your posts. Give your post a title both in the binder and on the page where it will be easy to copy and paste. If you need to check how many characters you get for this type of post, split your screen, adjust the top half to be a bit bigger, make sure your cursor is in the top half and open the accompanying infographic. So here's a square image. It needs to be 1200 by 1200 pixels. There's no title as such. And you're allowed to write a very long message, but they recommend 40 to 80 characters. Then, to create a similar post on Instagram, place your cursor in the bottom split and open the Instagram Posts folder. In Scrivener, you can speed up the creation of documents you use repeatedly by creating a document template. And I'll show you where in a moment. But to access a document template, go to Project, New from Template. In this case, we're going to use the Post Template. 
Give it a title in the binder that will remind you what the post is about. Include the published date if that's helpful. Place your cursor inside the top split and open the Instagram infographic. Here, the image needs to be at least 1080, but can be bigger, so you can use your 1200 pixel Facebook image. There's an actual headline, which has to be 40 characters, and you can have 2200 characters of text, but only two rows will display until your visitor clicks on the post. And you can add 30 hashtags. So that's how to compose a post using the infographics. Once you're finished with the infographics, click on the split icon inside the post screen to revert to one screen. Simply keep on adding new posts in the posts folder for each social media platform. Keep a folder on your hard drive with all your social media images and video if you like doing video. And don't forget to create a link in the inspector window to the image for each post so that you have a handy reference. Here's where your document templates are stored. You already have one for page info in case you want to add a new social media platform. And there's the template for the new post, which we used a moment ago. You can edit these here to suit your own workflow and you can create new ones. As long as they are in this folder, they will be available as a new template. If you have a website or a blog and you have the social media share buttons on it, you need to know about OG tags. This is how you control what gets shared when someone clicks on these buttons instead of Google crawling your page and selecting images or titles that might not be suitable. I've left you a link to the best explanation I can find so that you can learn all about OG images. Then here's a link to Facebook's debugger where you can see what your post will look like when people share it. Type in the URL of your page and hit the debug button. Scroll down to the link preview. And that's how to get the best out of this Scrivener social media template. I hope it helps you to organize your posts quickly and easily and encourages you to try one or two new platforms. In the next video, I'll show you how to use my Scrivener website template with a roadmap of all the pages you have to build and write copy for and all the emails you need to write to take your visitor on the journey you want them to take from initial awareness of your site to the action you want them to take eventually. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.